I like the way those guys dress. 36 to 30. Halftime of the Big Monday. Big East, Brad Nestler and Bill Raftery. 36 to 30. Syracuse could have been worse. You know, UConn didn't shoot it that well, but they seemed to have handled Syracuse press uh, a zone rather pretty well. They did. They just didn't score, unfortunately, but they did a little hide-and-seek, finding holes, getting themselves in position. Here's one of their attacks. They screened and given jump shots, but here, Bosco very active. See, Yudulis in no man's land. He's got to play two people. The reverse back. Now, Vasco becomes a point guy. And Freeman does a count the house. Gets himself to the goal. And the wise use of the offhand. The left delivery. And out of the old days of Pete Carrillo, a little step and go. The two-point guard mentality. Abchina, excellent passer out top. Cipolla, just like in New York City. Ooh. Show and go. And the clear out the back. Well designed. You don't see that too often in no. the Big East, do you? Pretty basket. 36 to 30, Syracuse at home. Cipolla led everybody with 14 in the first half, and Otis Hill was huge inside with eight strong points for the Orangemen, who are looking for their 16th win and trying to get to one game under 500 in the conference. Here's Cipolla. Let's see if he can pick up where he left off. He misses a three, and the rebound comes off to Freeman. A lot of trouble getting the ball inbound at that trip. Just be basic, UConn. Now run your stuff, complement it with a knockdown 15-footer or the hide on the baseline. It was the same play. See if UConn can pick it up a little bit from the outside with their shooting. Not that time. Loose ball, Jones tracks it down. Freeman's terrific, Brad, on that offensive glass. He's the one that kept it alive. Even though he knew he couldn't get it, he tried to make sure one of his teammates could. And his hook pass to Vasco inside, tough to handle. Hamilton, Moore, they work it around the perimeter. Ricky Moore does not shoot a lot, maybe not enough. He's going to pull up from 14 here. And a foul inside. Yanulis picks up. His first. Now, he's got to check out Kevin Freeman, who's one of the better offensive rebounders in this league. Great inside position. He's got to take that 10-foot yeah. out of the baseline, though. He's wide open. Everybody on UConn seems a little hesitant to shoot right now, with the exception of Hamilton and Jones. And here they are, out on top. Ross was such a big target in there, too. Hamilton got some penetration, didn't get the roll, and Freeman again trying to keep it alive. Last touch by Syracuse, and he will keep it alive. And that's one of those jump-stop plays. Uh, Connecticut, one of the programs in the country that specializes. Hamilton gets two pivot foot and then surges towards the goal. Fresh 35. Entry pass knocked away by Cipolla. He and Hart will bring it two on two. And Jason to Jason. Cipolla's got 16. A uh, nice little slide by by Cipolla. Don't give them open floor opportunities. That two, three faces out, Brad. They're all ready to go the other way, Syracuse. The orange up by eight now. As they have the opening basket of the second half. Wide open baseline shot. Freeman missed it by a mile, but it's kept alive. And a timeout taken as Hamilton had nowhere to go down on the baseline. Jim Calhoun not too crazy with the fact that his team had to call a timeout, but we'll take one as well. 22nd timeout here with 18.08 remaining in the ballgame. Syracuse by eight. Coach Nestler, uh, would you slide Hamilton as you see him with six? Maybe in Freeman's spot. That might not be that. a bad idea. I mean, if they're going to you know, lose his side, you see Cipolla having a great evening. And it'll give you another guy that can shoot from a different spot out there. And Cipolla's got 16 to lead everyone. You see Rashamel Jones, the only guy, double figures for UConn with 10. And here's the play. He gets the open look. And that could be Hamilton making it. But here's Hamilton rebounding. Freeman might be better on the other side yep. where it's Bergen. He can still get to the glass a little bit. I'd rather have Freeman rebounded down there. You're right. You're after 32 out there. Shoot. Here's Freeman as he takes it up against Otis Hill. And Otis will get credit for a block shot and knocking it out of bounds. And then one thing about Freeman, too, the great presence out there. I mean, physically imposing for a freshman at 235, 240, a rock. Otis Hill, no foul trouble tonight so far. I just thought of that when he blocked that last shot. Well, he worries, worries Jimmy game in the game out. Not in time. 
Shot clock violation on UConn. Jim Calhoun beside himself. I think Coach Calhoun even like the shot clock operator in that sense there. <laughs> well, somebody means uh, everybody gets a little upset. The vendors? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's too much mustard on this dog. Everything bothers you. I used to turn while. on my trainer. <laughs> why not, right? The tape was too tight. That's why we lost. That's and now right. we play that trip. Syracuse turns it right back over. More Vasco Freeman Hamilton. And Jones, the starting five on the floor for UConn as Ricky Moore brings it up. Ricky coming off a 15-point, seven-assist game in the lopsided win over Miami over the weekend, handing the Hurricanes their worst loss of the year. That, that shocked a lot of people in the conference. When it's guys that play great defense, haven't given up many points. Jones. Bosco kept it alive. Pretty long call. Hamilton, great touch pass. Jones to Hamilton, and Richards got eight. Was that a typical Bosco play, though? He did everything to keep it alive, and then along came Jones. Tough kick for a freshman. Bosco having to battle the senior hill right now in the high post. Here they are. Got a piece of jersey on Otis. Hey, you did notice that. He's going to have to tell Otis to tuck that thing back in. He can say, hey, ref, it's not my fault. Okay, that time, Bosco didn't have the shirt. A call for the foul. He should stick with the shirt. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Otis once in a while looks like an unmade bed out there. Yes, he does. The long pants, the droopy <laughs> shirt. Zapola out to Hart. Grayson's gone just about the whole way. He's going to take it from way outside. Missed it. And Jones clears it ahead. Well, he and Cipolla used to play a lot of minutes. But they go 45 against West Virginia. They did, exactly. Yeah. The entire distance and the OT. There's only the played, Syracuse yeah. only played seven guys. So oh. That's short. And Bergen over to Cipolla. Wide open. And he missed a three. Hamilton, Jones, and Freeman now bring it back down in the three-on-three. Three. Jones going to try to penetrate this time. It does. Well, they got up on him for the jump shot. The other end, nice offensive thrust by Syracuse. You miss those threes. Generally, it opens up the floor. And Rush, Jones with a deuce. who's cut up to four. Bergen quiet offensively tonight. As Raff said, though, when he shoots less, they win more. Triple team on Otis Hill. Let's see who they're going to get for this one. Miles on Freeman is first. And we've got a timeout with 15.45 to go. And the gap is closing at Syracuse by four. I'm grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house fire, a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder. He treated us as a neighbor as a friend i gave him a check right away we went from there to putting the pieces back together he's not a hero in the sense of a, a sports hero or a movie star he's a quiet hero he looks out for everyone in the neighborhood it's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life very safe in this car. People love talking about Ford Taurus. I mainly bought it for safety and security. I like the way it looks. This car is everything I need to fit my lifestyle. Feel safe. Reassuring. It handles well. It hugs the road. I can turn on a dime. I finally found a manufacturer who listens to the customer. Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America, starting at 18545. It's forward moving, forward thinking, and I love being a part of that. You can't beat it. Took it to the next level. The fist to cup, and here's what. The grabbing of the shirt, something that I know you did in your heyday. You bet. 
Uh, this is the help by Freeman that ends up getting the foul. There's the centers of attention. That's a tough hill for Vosco, a freshman, to climb. Eight points for Otis. Most of those came early in the ball game, however, but he's held his own pretty well against the captain of the Orangemen. Last year playing for straight Jesuit High in Texas, and this year banging around in the Big East against one of the strongest guys in the conference. Straight Jesuit been pretty good to them, huh? Yeah. Bergen way outside, missed. Freeman clears it off to Moore. Ricky pulls up and missed the jumper. Bergen quickly in transition. Syracuse brings it back down. UConn got back on defense, but they left open. You know, that's that three-pronged attack out there. Space them on the wings. They can fill it up. But Ricky Moore had a great look down here. And then they put the threes up. That's higher than you want to sit, by the way. That's right. Well, Syracuse has four good outside shooters. Bergen, Yanulis, Sapola, obviously, and then Jason Hart, who doesn't shoot that much, but is a pretty good outside shooter as well, outside the arc anyway. Boy, this 2-3 zone keeps the time moving, doesn't it? Let's see when he stops. That kick. Ricky Moore had another good look. Pulls up. Got the shot away, and Otis Hill the rebound. Another one of those, you can't beat the look. If you're coaching, that's your job. Get you guys good looks. Nice pump bait. Set it up. Bergen, threw it away. And Ricky Moore runs into Hart. That's Hart's first foul. Third day at ESPN Moore College basketball. First from the Big Ten at 7.30 Eastern. Michigan will meet Iowa. Carver Hawkeye and Iowa City. And at 9.30, it's Louisville and Marquette from the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Marquette's got to start to put it back together. Now they've hit a little bit of a rocky road. That's our doubleheader lineup Thursday on ESPN. Or four in a row, I think. Yeah. You know, Clark made the point about getting easy baskets. Uh, Connecticut can't get them. Goods for hearts at the top of the key, ready to protect the basket. They can't turn it into an easy opportunity. They really They're only stuck in the mud here. Yep. Everything's contested. Here's Freeman, double team. They're making their passes crisply, too. It's just not paying off. Let's see if Oscar can do it inside. No, he threw it away. Nice defense by Syracuse. They are always in a lane, aren't they? Playing it beautifully. Yadoulis, he'll try another outside jumper. Vasco and Hill got tangled up on the rebound, and Otis will pick up the first one. When you go back outside with the basketball, Vasco killed himself with the dribble. He's got to work on some footsteps to go up and get a shot down there. Maybe a little jump hook of that nature, but don't turn. If defense is turned facing you, you're going to have some problems. And he'll come out. Claver will go back in. See, kids like Bosco very seldom get hollered at by anybody because they give you everything. I mean, you can do everything you can. They give you yeah. effort. I mean, it's, uh, you know, so it's a turnover, and you don't like it. And big guys occasionally get in a position where they make those type of mistakes. Hamilton, three. You keep trying like that to learn a lot of Hamilton's. <laughs> That's his third triple of the night. 11 points for the ball game. And that's a little change out getting Hamilton at the top and you're always searching any place to find him some open space like you said earlier that's the way to go Claver trying to stay with Hill and it came out on Otis and Claver will clear it off Freeman flying and it blocked by Hill his sixth block shot of the night what effort to Otis a little bit out of gas now Capola. Rare turnover for him. Flavor and it's stripped by Hart. And Hart a little bit disgusted with himself. At first I thought maybe he hurt his leg, but I think that was an anticipation call too, don't you? I do too. Oh, I think he got a lot of the basketball. Nice run by Jason. Premature motion with the P. And as you said, Otis a little bit winded. Hill will come out. The free throw line, Patrick Claver. Every time you look over, Jimmy Boeheim now chatting with Otis Hill. Bernie Fine, who's been there, what, forever? 21 years. <laughs> 21, and an undergrad as well. He spends a lot of time with big guys. There he is. Had those glasses when I first met him a few years ago. But uh, they've developed some good. And Otis Hill's one of those guys, geez, you don't think he's that good, is the free throw situation. Not real. 
Perfection, huh? Glaber came in shooting 41% from the line. Hit the first of two. Now Chena with the rebound. It's a three-point ball game. UConn is hanging tough despite Syracuse stingy defense. And Jimmy, ba or Jimmy Calhoun goes bigger now with Bosco and Klaver in there for the first time tonight together. And that's with Hill on the sideline, too. And a tough match on Alcina for Bosco because he can drag him away from the goal. Bergen nails it. Just enough, huh? And he uses it up, bounces, will make the three. They're much better when he plays within the confines of the offense. Not looking to jack him up. And he sure has tonight. He's taking very few shots. Seven points for Todd. The lead is back to five. Flavor. That's a tough position. Alcina got a piece of it. He got it back, though. And he's fouled. Second foul on Elvier. That's what I was looking for Flavor to go back up strong. And he got the first one. Get yourself ready. Project into the air. We've got 11 minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the ball game. UConn has come back, but Syracuse continues to lead thanks to Todd Bergen, who just buried his last jumper and has given the Orangemen a five-point advantage. Cozy, huh? What? Whoa. Whoa. Big room? No way. Security? Close <laughs> the transportation! Classic fixtures. Ooh, what do we have here? Bud Light. Go ahead. It's got your name on it. I'll get my own. Nice. Ah, huh? I'll take it. For the great taste that will fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. That was close. I was down on my last one. you buy. <laughs> so, where do you want this? Hey now, <laughs> I ordered a new copier. This is better than new, my friend. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah. Oh, what do we have here? Wow. Enlarges too. Yeah. Whoa. Even Kool-Aid. <laughs> I'll take it. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. That was close. I didn't think I could shove this baby through. Both of these teams fit into our who's hot category in the Big East. UConn's one over BC and Miami. Georgetown, their last seven games. Miami, their last nine, despite their loss to the Huskies. And in uh, the who's not column, BC has fallen on some tough times. Same with Providence and Villanova. And those are the clubs that were ranked in the respective top 25 for most of the year from the Big East. And the Big East wondering how many teams are going to get in the tournament. And right now, you kind of think maybe there's five teams playing for two spots, Raph. I don't know. That's just a guess. Two? Uh, okay. I see what you mean. I thought you were going to say they're only getting two. Uh, if they get four, I'd say there's going to be a few that are disappointed and left out of the show. Jones off the glass. And Rochamel knows how to use that glass. He sure does. A little gimpy knee, too, coming off that injury in the Seton Hall game. BC without Danny A, incidentally, after the altercation, has to miss a game. Chena almost threw it away. Bergen comes up with it. Hart going one-on-one -on -one with Moore, and Moore cut him off. Ten on the shot clock. Yanulis outside. Hamilton on him. He just puts it up over him. And a foul on Hamilton. And Richard did a great job forcing Yanulis to put it on the floor and then helped out by the reach in. They got a little nickel dimer on the elbow. Been very few fouls. Otis Hill still on the bench, not in foul trouble, just getting a rest. And getting an earful, too, uh, Professor <laughs> Corey. I mean, Bayheim over there. Sat in the way with him. Well, the good news is you get a rest, Otis. The bad news is you got to sit by me. <laughs> Well, you know Jimmy's not telling any jokes, I mean, whether it's in or off, off the basketball court. Four-point game with just under 11 to go in the ball game. A 
favored at left, although Jones scored on the right earlier. Ricky Moore on top. And to try to penetrate a little and leave it for Jones. He's been the hottest shooter tonight from the outside. Moore now he penetrates all the way with a left hand. What a release, Brad. Against the big guy, too, elevating. And then it was two. 44-42 as we approach the midway point of the second half. UConn right back in the thick of things. Trailed by as many as 12 in the first half, by six at the break, by eight in this half. And now they're within a bucket. Hart runs out of room, forces one. That's a freshman mistake of himself in traffic and then throwing that thing up. And a great help by Bosco, too, for the lead. Hamilton nails it. And Jim Beheim says, we got to talk this thing over. UConn looked buried at one point. They've shot themselves back into it. 45-44. UConn with 9.46 remaining in the ballgame. And Hamilton with 14 points over his average already. And he's hit four threes tonight. And Brad, it's been the man-to-man -man defense, really, that slowed Syracuse down a little bit. The Huskies in front by one. Welcome to Toyota Smile Album. Everybody really loves the new Camry. What will make you smile more? An all-expense-paid trip to Hawaii or an all-expense-paid test drive of the 97 Camry? Don't answer. I know exactly what you want. Pretty cool, huh? This Camry is great. Lots of power. <laughs> Camry's big savings will have you smiling, too. Check it out now at your Toyota dealer and get great deals on Avalon. Now, wasn't this better than going to Hawaii? Yeah, if we get to keep the car. You want a reason to smile? See your Kansas City Metro Toyota dealer. Bad weather and you just can't see? Don't become another accident statistic. Order Rain-X Professional Glass Treatment during this special TV offer. Just look at the clear Rain-X difference. Call now and we'll send you a year's supply for just $19.95. Rain-X turns ordinary glass into a water-repelling barrier. But wait, if you call right now, we'll include Rain-X Windshield Washer Additive that makes eight full gallons free. To order for just $19.95, call 1-800-257-5700. We do causes. If it's something we truly believe in our hearts. In this league, there's something brewing. You can see it in Patrick Ewing. When it's an extra step he's taking, it's a rule he is breaking. Yeah, if it's a worthy cause, we get involved. Don't walk to the pros after all. Don't walk to Come on, refs, make the call. Don't walk big men, you know who you are. It's love. Jim Calhoun getting his club to push the basketball to the floor. They need some easy opportunities. He's been very calm, I think, since all the NCAA difficulties. Relaxed with his team. Good open look for Hamilton now, and that'll get the old coach a plug. Hamilton, they call him Rip, and he has ripped four of them outside the arc tonight. Has given UConn the lead now with 9.40 left in the ballgame. Brad Nessler, Bill Raftery with him from Syracuse in a key game. In the Big East tonight between these two clubs, with the Big East turning not very far away. Otis Hill back in the Syracuse lineup. Akina on the baseline. Bergen pulled it off the weak side. Nice trap. Good step through. Sapolo reverse layup for the lead and a chance to add to it. And give it to Bergen. What a job running down the... Akina got the terrific look. Just short-armed it a little bit, but the step through after the offensive rebound. Now, here's what Jason Hart has done for this basketball team. Find some people, put a little heat on it, and Cipolla, who's knocking him down with regularity, able to convert in a chance for three. Jason's had a big night, 18. Missed a free throw. And that's a rarity for him, although he missed one that could have kept that West Virginia game from being overtime. He's off the mark a little bit. That 88% falling slightly. Now, you guys become confident on either side. You've got penetration on the right side. The hide man on the left. One-point game. Syracuse in front. Sapola plays for the steal. You better stay home on him out gotta there. Got to shoot it. Moore looks up. Let's it fly. Almost got it off the glass. Sapola on the rebound. Here comes Jason Hart. Eight and a half 
minutes remaining in the ball game. Sapolo wide open. Got it! Oh. And the defense was right there, wasn't it? Mistake. High confidence on his stroke. At 21 in the overtime win over West Virginia, he's got 21 tonight. The lead back up to four, and here comes the carry it on crowd. They really haven't been able to get it to the box at all let Bosco make some dump down passes. Traffic inside and a push on Freeman by Alcina. Look at this distance. I mean, you just don't want to foul. Hamilton right there. But nothing but nylon. And I don't mean stockings, Brad. <laughs> Christ the King, Bobby Oliva. Got a few playing around the country. Mm -hmm. Fourth of the Big East in three-point percentage, as you saw, statistically. On a sweet-looking shot. We're under eight minutes. Move Hamilton out to get that little straddle between the two people. Moore will try one outside. Ricky missed a three. Alcina had his hand on the rebound, and Jones comes free with it. Hamilton's the guy that's been hot from the outside tonight. Jones misses on the baseline. Hart going to try to bring it by himself. Oh, it's all over the court. Too much, huh? the other way. A little too deep, Brad. Tomorrow night, Super Tuesday on ESPN. We'll start off at 7.30. Purdue beats Indiana at Assembly Hall. And at 9.30, big SEC battle as Arkansas playing well right now in Columbia to meet Eddie Fogler's Gamecocks. That's our twin bill tomorrow night on Super Tuesday. How about South Carolina going up to Cincy? Oh, now we lost one to Georgia in conference play last week. That's their first time they tripped to the SEC. And then they beat the Bearcats over the weekend. You love that three-guard look as Hamilton gets a good look here. I really do. They got a few people copying that around the country. Well, you're thinking of your man, Sergeant. <laughs> Cipolla missed that one. Here comes Hamilton. He beats Cipolla to the ball. And a foul on Jason. And it's one of those smart fouls. Good giveaway. He's got a wide open berth. Did he go? That was going to be a jam by Richard Hamilton if Cipolla didn't get in the way. And he picks up the foul. They are fast break starters when you don't make uh, the long ones. And that's that little giveaway and intelligent approach, even though Hamilton's going to get a chance to stroke a couple at 73%. 14 tonight for Richie. Donald's All American. 24 points a game and 14 rebounds a game as a high school senior. Look at those two guys. They both can recruit and they prove that they both can get guys to do what they want, huh? That's for sure. Two-point ball game. Syracuse with the ball and the lead, and we're under seven minutes. We we'll dive to the box. It's a ball of running Hamilton ragged on the baseline. Well, Hill does like to plant one on you. He's a smart little low-post player. Bergen had it stripped for the foul on uh, Rashamel Jones. You know what's nice about both these teams? No woofing. You notice that? Very competitive forward. Yeah, they're just doing good defensive position. The three-quarter here forced the reverse of the basketball, and Hill tries to present again. And Bergen settles. And Vasco did not three-quarter here because they had a good cushion by Jones. Tom Bergen off the mark on the free throw line. Tom only seven points tonight. He says, we think about the NCAA, but we don't talk about it. <laughs> you know it's in the back of all their minds. And, of course, the Big East tournament almost in the front of their minds now as Rath will be up there at the Garden in uh, a little over, what, a week and a half? Couple uh, weeks. Uh, this is the time of year you're thinking about the games you let get away. It's almost like golf. You right. know, the putt you've missed. Jones had a great look at a three, but it didn't drop for him. There's a lob. Alcina was grabbed as he tried to go up by Bosco. Or was it Freeman? It was Freeman. Pretty, pretty defensive play. Tough gamble by Hart. A lot of regular season left, Rap, but uh, here's how the Big East turning would look if it started right now. The first round buys would be BC's Miami and Villanova. Some pretty good uh, 
evening there. The evening's work, wouldn't you say? You bet. Uh, nothing easy. A lot of jockeying for, for position, though, to go on over the next 10 days. Next one, UConn will be in the penalty. A gamble pass by Hart. That's the confidence he has right now. It's actually two weeks from Wednesday night, right? That's when the Big East Turtles are against. I may have said a week and a half earlier. Be there. Bring some uh, money this year. It's expensive town. I just thought I'd follow you around. Burton. Off the front on a three. Bosco with a key rebound. UConn down three with five and a half to play. And Hamilton just helped out a little bit on that defensive set. Just enough. They're working around the perimeter at Syracuse zone. Now they pack it in. Bosco underneath. A little bit short. Jason Hart says it's slowing down. Can't beat the look, though. And they use a lot of clock, shorten the game with the two-three zone, make you use time. We have played less than an hour and a half here, and there's only four minutes and 50 seconds left. And yeah, very fortunate to get it back as Jason Sapoli gambled with the bounce in the lane. Trying to get Yanulis back in as Jim Beheim, and he does get the horn. And that will sit Alcina down. And with that zone look now, too, you got another deep threat. 13 on the shot clock, which is something Syracuse has to be aware of. Hart's going to take a break. And Moore comes out of there with a rebound. Great pass for Moore. The extra look at Hardnett score. Oh, did they run that break beautifully. Good look. Went, and same thing as Hart. The gamble look by Moore. It's a one-pointer with 4.20 to play. I think Jason Hart will be taking a shot anytime soon again after the last one. Bergen will take a big shot, and it came out on it. Bosco had a hand on the rebound, and then Hart picks up the foul, trying to strip it away. Well, running and getting some easy baskets in a low-scoring game, you love to do it anytime. but right here, Moore acknowledges the cut, and you mentioned the extra look, and Clint up in a superb fashion as Hartnett's able to finish. Might have been the best ball movement of the night by the Huskies when they needed it the most. And now they get a chance to tie it up. We've got a rare free throw coming up. This is the fifth free throw. Uh, make it the seventh free throw of the night for UConn. What's most impressive about UConn, Calhoun's been able to get young guys. Now here's the lane by just so get another if needed. Young guys to play. One shot. Get off the deck a little bit when they struggled a couple of weeks ago. All of a sudden, understand a little bit more. A first-year guy in Hardnett, although a junior. Right. And you put the freshman in with him, and they get a lot of mileage. And next year, they should be awfully good. Very particularly when you think of Vasco's upside in the perimeter people. The freshman Vasco has just given UConn the lead. Under four to go. Hill working against Vasco down low. They try to double-team Cipolla around the perimeter. Husky's hustling down defense all over. Try not to leave anybody open. Hill has to kick it back out to Bergen. Six on the shot clock. Bergen might be the man that'll have to do it. He does, and he got it. A nice job defensively with the front end low. Uh, Bergen's got the entire green light all year long. He can make some awfully big shots. Todd puts the orange back up by one. Crowd now starting to rock a little bit at the carrier dome. Seesaw battle. Key matchup with about three minutes left. Moore with 10 on the shot clock, pushes it outside. Hardnett takes one dribble, and the rebound, Bosco, but did he throw it away? It was deflected. Good call by Valentine, too. Jim Behan didn't like it. Bill Raftery, 
agrees with a call by Teddy Valentine. And a fresh 35, and now we're down to 240 remain. Don't have the threat outside there. Vasco, nice entry in there by Freeman. Vasco's going to go back to the free throw line where he hit his last two. Brad, you know the pressure on Kevin Freeman in that interior passing. Look at all the traffic in the hands. Good, solid interior passing. And Bosco with the roll. Nice presentation. And Hamilton back in. I mentioned no deep threat. Hamilton getting the blow. And it was one of those trips they could have used them. Now here's Jake. His dad played at Tulsa back in the early 70s. Did you work those games? No, but I imagine uh, you were at least in the vicinity somewhere coaching. Uh, we didn't play Tulsa in those days. They've always had a great program. We played with some plays like the father. The father had to be a heck of a player. Yeah, his dad Joe is a good player. Jake missed that one after hitting his first two. Ripped the second one. And that ties it up with 2.28 to play. Problem. Until now, Delta introduces Brilliance, the extraordinary new polished brass finish that's guaranteed to shine for life. New Brilliance from Delta, the faucet. From NBA News, new Mavericks boss Don Nelson. For him, Big D stands for Deal, a nine-player trade with New Jersey. Dallas sends Gatling, Jackson, Montrose, Cassell, and McLeod to New Jersey for Sean Bradley, Khalid Reeves, Ed O'Bannon, and Robert Pack. So, Bill Raftery, the next time you do a Nets game, don't show up five minutes before tip-off. A new team for Calipari. <laughs> Send me a program. Maybe I'll work for Dallas, Chris. <laughs> do the Mavericks out of the front. Are you sure I was a name <laughs> as a future? Yeah. <laughs> Broadcaster to be named later. Part of that. Wow, what a trade. Oh, let's see things up. <laughs> Just over two minutes left, tie ball game. Bergen for three. Hill had his hand on it and lost it. A little bit of concern on the face of Jim Beheim, as you might expect. Uh, they put Vasco high They've done this in the first half. They'll, they'll screen as the ball is passed. And is there a little high low set? Got Hamilton running the baseline. He's there. That shooter and Freeman nails one inside. A little pull into the string with the Hamilton high man. And Freeman just loosening it up. 54-52 UConn by a deuce. Trying to pack it into Hill. Knocked away by Vasco and Moore. Right now, Syracuse with a couple of 20-second timeouts left. UConn with two full timeouts. Team fouls. Connecticut still not with seven. Syracuse will be shooting one-on-one -on -one the next time. They hack somebody. Let's go down to 115. It's Ran out of room. Somehow got a pass on the opposite baseline. Oh, that was just...
just terrific, sticking with it, didn't force the shot. That's what experience does. How impressive was that pass alone with the left hand and Yanulis buried it outside. Orangeman by one. Moore, Hamilton. He nails a three. Ricky Moore, look at the prints by Hamilton. UConn by two. Timeout taken with 40.7 left. Do you recall earlier in the game suggesting that Hamilton should get down there on that baseline twice now. Freeman goes to the goal and gets it. Here we take a look at Cipolla, as you mentioned, an unbelievable find with the left hand across the baseline. Yanulis with the knockdown, and Jimmy B. Get back, get back, get back. Well, they got back and they saw Hamilton do what Raph said earlier, get the kid in position to shoot, and they did. And he nailed it on the other end for the Huskies. Fifth triple of the night for Richard Hamilton has given UConn a two-point lead. And this is a very, very important regular season game with a tourney only a couple of weeks away because here's how the standings look in the Big East Six. UConn could go into a tie for third place with West Virginia if they can win and pick up their 15th win overall. On the other side of things, Syracuse trying to climb to the 500 mark. They could get back to within a game of 500 and go to 16 and 10 overall if they win it. That's how big this game is. Now Clark mentioned the power rating. They're talking about UMass. That's a big win looming bigger for Connecticut as the year progresses. But what organization by UConn against the zone the last two trips? Freeman with the penetration, then the fine of Hamilton, and now they've got to be alert. They've been switching defenses, been man of late. I would look for them to stick with the man-to-man, -man, make sure they challenge the shooter, but don't get beat by dribble penetration. I don't know if either one of these teams will end up in the NCAA wrap, but the way they played tonight, it has been a well-played game on both sides. They give somebody fits, no matter who they played, if they make the tournament. Both teams have looked very, very good. Hart dishes out. Sapola fading a little bit, got his own rebound. He'll try it again. Oh, what pursuit. They're going to call a timeout now because of the press. That was all heart and not Jason. The heart of Jason Sapola. Mr. Three, run it down. He knock it down. you by <laughs> the devil supreme yeah i've tried it it was good okay really good somehow it seemed well bigger but what really did it for me was the taste so who's gonna see this anyway Three point nine seconds left and tied at 57. Rap. Unbelievable hustle. I mean, you know the game is in the off beat. If you stay in the corner, the ability to search and then retrieve. And how about this emotion? Jim Beheim with a little body English on Sapola's follow says, "Yeah, we'll take it." Looks like a bad shot shot. <laughs> Jim Calhoun on the other end. His team has the ball in hand. 23.9 seconds left. What's the strategy? Well, I think Ricky Moore eventually is going to get it and look to penetrate. They're pressing full court. I look for him to stay man to man. They got Hill back, so there won't be any long pass. Freeman trying to inbound and gets it into Moore. That's who they want to handle it. He'll bring it up against Todd Bergen. And they do settle back into the zone. Under 15. Ricky Moore looking under the clock. Let's see who takes the last shot. Hamilton's on the left wing. Eight. Under six. Moore going to have to hurry. Dishes out. Jones. A play at the buzzer. And it up. Over top. And what a nice job by Syracuse. They may have 
switched to D, confused him. They almost caused the walk out at the top, bottled everything up. I think Moore waited too long to get it started. But overtime is yet to come from the Carrier Dome. We'll be back. you by <laughs> my brakes are gone any chance i could get that fixed in a couple of hours tell you what leave it here i'll see what i can do check in periodically i was wondering how's my car coming i have three of my best guys on it right now with Pep Boys, 12 service bays and expert technicians, you're in and out fast. 26,000 items, tires and service too. Pep Boys, everything but gas. The Missouri Tigers have done what no one else in college basketball has been able to do this year, beat the top-ranked Kansas Jayhawks. Tonight, the rematch at Allen Fieldhouse, where the number one ranking and a 42-game home winning streak are on the line. The 234th meeting of Missouri-Kansas, next. Franklin here to Big East, Syracuse and Connecticut tied at 57. Here's the final shot and by see, UConn. And Bergen, they thought it was matched up man-to-man. -man. Everybody had a guy. That's why Ricky Moore kept it a long time. At the end, Jones does not walk. We can almost see he chains a little dance step there. This one was going to be legal if it went down. And, oh, how tantalizingly close to the UConn following. Point one left on that shot clock as Jones launch that shot but UConn just waited a little too long to try to get things set for their last shot so here we are in overtime straight up man to man and they can really be lying on the outside this time they right after the time after went to Hill he makes a fine and here's in the list for three and rattled out on it and it'll go off to UConn now a lesson too because when Bosco touches it on the other end he seems to get some good things so Hill Ends up getting a little bit of a double and a kick. Maybe it's a matter of who handles the pressure better now because Syracuse is on their home floor, as we said, coming into this game. UConn has never had a player on this floor before. That's how young they are. Jones missed outside. And Bosco will pick up the foul. And I believe that's four on Jake. Don't forget, top right Kansas has lost only once this year. That was to Norm Stewart in Missouri. They'll be looking for a little payback on their home court. As Big Monday continues, that's our second game coming up as soon as we're through with overtime or however many overtimes it might take from the Carrier Dome. Jake picks up his fourth foul, and he will get a breather right now, so that takes away a little bit of power and presence in the middle as Otis Hill goes to the free throw line. And yet, Kirby's pretty good defense line. His OT at 60% knocks that one down flawlessly. Kirby's a good deny guy. Quicker feet, maybe, in the post area. If you continue going to Hill, that could be a little dilemma for you, Con. That's the first two points for Otis Hill since halftime. He did not score the second half of regulation. Ten for Otis. And Syracuse with a two-point lead in the extra stanza. Jimmy Calhoun's moved Richard Hamilton around. He's on the right wing now. He's been baseline. Oh! Nice spin by Freeman underneath. A little power. That 235 come in handy there. The interior pass earlier. The drive by Freeman. Stepping up a little bit confidently. Nobody really recognized him. They're giving him that pass because they know he won't shoot the jumper. But you still have to contain the penetration. Kevin, who had 10 points and 10 rebounds in the first meeting between these two clubs, has 10 points tonight. And a chance to give his club the lead here with 4 6 remaining in overtime. But he missed the free throw. Todd Bergen the rebound. We are tied at 59. Brad Nessler and Bill Raftery from Syracuse, New York, in overtime. Dive to the box by Hill. He might be able to overpower Claver if they wait. Otis Hill. Score it. Chance for a three-point play. This was all a 
fake design to the right box, which set up Andre Klaver. He's anticipating here. He fights from the one side. The composure of Bill to get to the other box, and now away from the trap, the power with a chance for three. Otis had only two points in the first half of the overtime win over West Virginia. Came out and ended up with 19. Tonight, he's got 12 points as the free throw comes away. Todd Bergen slapped that off Freeman's hand. It's Syracuse ball. The little things out of the experience of Hill, but also Syracuse getting it to him. And that time, Bergen very active on the rebound. Syracuse involved in back-to-back -back overtimes. They beat West Virginia by 10 in OT. And they had a chance to win that one before regulation ended. Otis Hill going back to work. Bosco fouled him. That's it. Bosco fouls out. Brad, he stuck him. Hill, with the experience, got into the lane, made a great presentation and begged for the ball. Now watch this. Bosco a little too flat. There's the stick. And the bank with the right hand away from traffic once again. Not a pretty release, but he knew he had the contact. Back in the last week of January, Bosco became the first opponent to foul out against Syracuse this year. And for the second time in his many meetings against the Orangemen, he has fouled out again. He leaves with 334 left in OT. And now it's a smaller lineup on the floor for Jim Calhoun as the big foul steps to the free throw line. Michael LeBlanc has checked in, along with Hamilton and Freeman, Moore, and Jones. That's the five guys on the floor for UConn. I don't know if they have anybody to match up with Otis Hill or which one free throws. Well, I think they're figuring they're not scoring and we call a timeout. They might be able to pressure with this lineup, but you're right. Hill, tough for the big guys. Three and a half to go in OT, and it's Syracuse by four. Okay, Max, I'm flying to Puerto Vallarta today. Can you say Puerto Vallarta? Santa Domingo. No, that was yesterday. Honolulu, Miami. Puerto Vallarta. Montego Bay, Orlando, Cancun. Puerto Vallarta. Fort Lauderdale. Uh. You can see all these sunny destinations on Transworld Airlines. We're up to something good. Puerto. Huh? Puerto. 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 Getting to the Final Four isn't easy. It takes a combination of work, talent, and courage. Or a combination of these. The American Express card helps you do more at National Car Rental. Use it and get two scratch and score instant win cards. Every time you rent from participating national locations, you get a chance to win one of ten trips for two to the Final Four. This may be all you'll need to get to the Final Four. Of course, some of us will try and get there the hard way. Scratch and score from American Express and National Car Rental. Syracuse in overtime, leading by four with three and a half to go. They're trying to go to seven and eight in conference play. UConn is seven and seven. And since the 87-88 year, nine Big East teams with 500 or below conference records have played in the NCAA tournament. The last was Seton Hall at eight and ten in 94. That same span, by the way, eight teams that were 500 or better didn't make the tournament. So it's kind of a 50-50 shot. Strength of schedule obviously has a lot to do with it. How how hot you get at the right time has a lot to do with it. Right now, UConn's won four of their last five, but Syracuse coming off an overtime win over West Virginia, involved in another one, and they lead by four with three and a half minutes to play. And now the gamble that you alluded to, the small lineup, you got to score quickly, you don't have a chance to maybe get an offensive rebound, but if you do score, you've got a good pressure group on the floor. It's Jones, LeBlanc, Freeman, Hamilton, and Moore on the floor for the Huskies. LeBlanc, the good shooter. You can't complain about their shooting prowess that's on the floor, I guess. No. Well, how physical can they be if they need to be? Well, Freeman, good offensive rebounder, though. One. LeBlanc almost walks. Hamilton, baseline. Miss it. Battling for the rebound, Otis Hill fouls Freeman. That's now amazing. Otis has four. That is amazing. With a smaller lineup, it doesn't mean... You don't back off, though. They got themselves to the glass. LeBlanc in good position, and Otis with the swipe. Michael LeBlanc comes in with a three-point per game average. Just got in the lineup when Bosco fouled out, so... 
This is going to be his first shot attempt of the whole night. We're in overtime. Oh, straight Jesuit, huh? <laughs> Who wants to play that? That's right. Vasco and LeBlanc played high school ball together. The second one rattled out in Bergen with an all-important rebound. Solid D. You don't have to do anything silly. Stay at home. I would opt for Hill if I'm Syracuse. Yep, me too. He's backing in on Freeman right now and calling for it. And they get the hold. You're right. Freeman with the foul. Some disadvantage for Kevin down in the block. That's number three. I think if Kevin could have held his ground for another half second without bumping Hill so much, there might have been a three-second call. Otis was camped out in there asking for the basketball. Uh, if Kevin's going to continue playing, and maybe if he can let him catch it, root him out, let him catch it a little further, and force Otis to put it on the floor. Otis Hill, four of five from the free throw line. I missed that one. Around the rim, he's too tough, I think, for Freeman. But move him out and see if he can make a quick release or a bad shot. There's the free throw shooting tonight. Neither team is that great in conference play. And the free throws, Otis Hill has 15 points. And seven in this overtime. 64 to 60 Syracuse. Well, they got the defense stretched. They might be able to find somebody baseline. I think they'd love to find Hamilton baseline, although he missed his last shot from out there. Look how wide they are on the wings, too. Moore has got to dish it to somebody. He's the quarterback out there. LeBlanc, Hamilton, got to let one go pretty soon. Jones, oh, and he's pushed by Bergen with two seconds left on the shot clock. What a small changer, and yet legit, as Todd, when you're running out to close, you've got to be in control and taking away the baseline. Now, UConn utilizes the floor. You see how he came high side where there isn't any support on the baseline and ends up with the reach. Rashamel will step up, 6'5", sophomore, 14 points on the night, right on his average. And he rips it. His first free throw of the night, he buries it to make it a three-point game. This could cut it to a one-basket Encounter with 2.13 left. Curious to see what they do after the mid free throw. If, and then, I think he's going to set up a little bit of a press, Jimmy. Utilize the speed, take Hill out of the game that way. Otis Hill with a big rebound. Syracuse with a three-point lead as we approach two minutes. Let's see if Hill backs in on Freeman now. Kevin met him, though. Kept him out. He's doing the same thing here. And a whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Hamilton. Against Bergen. Well, Todd Bergen will step to the free throw line. Don't forget, top right Kansas and Missouri in the Big 12 coming up next. Following our overtime encounter, Todd Bergen 10 points tonight to go with his 10 rebounds. A little casual on the free throw, but it did roll around and drop for him. McNabb looking on, of China. Came away from the line on that last free throw. And that one he faded a little bit too. Battle for the rebound, and Ricky Moore won it. But it's a two-possession ball game right now for UConn. They trail by four. They've taken a long time to make their move, though. That's been the problem against this zone. They're going to get attacked a little bit more. Get it to the gap. The pressures are playing in a rowdy place in overtime, and they throw it away. What a great look for the say to hit the basket in the back. But just a terrific penetration and fine. It was a good thought, just not a thought completed. So now it's getting a desperation point for UConn. Both teams over the limited fouls, each team shooting two. Arrow with Connecticut. As the officials have a conversation with Jim Behan right now. And a timeout taken with 1.32 remaining and the Orange went up by four. I'm going to capture the $97.97 truck event at a Latham Ford. For only $97 a month, you can lease a new 1997 Ford Ranger XLT flare side. 
with AC, clock, interior, AM, FM, CD, stereo. At this price, trucks are disappearing in a flash. So hurry to Olathe Ford and capture your very own sporty Ford Ranger for only $97 a month. Come see the sensational $97 in 97 truck event at Olathe Ford. 2 I-35 on 150 Highway, next to Olathe Lincoln Mercury. See the light with pay-per-view. Without leaving home, you can get the newest hit movies and biggest special events. Check out this month's best on pay-per-view. This is your mission. I highly recommend the shuttle. You are not a coach. 260 pounds of sheer force, power, and pain. And when you order pay-per-view, you'll also get our free monthly catalog. Filled with at-a-glance schedules, colorful event highlights, a movie planner, complete ordering instructions, and more. To order pay-per-view, call the number on your screen today. minute and 32 remaining in overtime and Syracuse leads by four UConn the remainder of their schedule they felt like they had to at least have this one or the Villanova game coming up on Sunday to have a chance to get in the NCAA then Pitt Seton Hall and the Big East tourney to follow and for Syracuse their remainder looks like this Rutgers at Providence Pitt here and then the Big East tournament in New York and the feeling was and Raft and I talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the game and some of the insiders would tell you that the team that lost this game tonight would probably have to win the Big East tournament to go to the NCAA. That is uh, just theory and opinion, nothing more. But it starts to put somebody behind the eight ball a little bit. If UConn drops to seven and eight and Syracuse goes up to seven and eight, the Orangemen would be 16 and 10. The Huskies would be 14 and 10. Big East tourney is going to be a rock'em, sock'em, mixed up, who knows what will happen in an event, I'll tell you that much, at Madison Square Garden. Well, Brad, the part of it right now, they're spraying the floor to get rid of some blood, so your rock'em, sock'em is starting a little bit early. <laughs> uh, Yanoulis uh, took a little bit of a shot. They had to patch him up. But now they're cleaning the floor. Patch up the floor, patch up the players. Jake Krautham, the AD out there, uh, former Dartmouth coach, football that is. Now, uh, charge of custodial supplies here. <laughs> Athletic director and oh, they're uh, still cleaning things up. Well, they're going to host a regional here, aren't they? He's got his assistant AD out there too. These guys are doing the heavy artillery work. Dennis, get that thing mopped up out there. 92 seconds remaining in overtime, and again, second straight overtime for Syracuse. They beat West Virginia in OT over the weekend. Can they do it now? At home here today against UConn. Well, you're talking about the tournament. I, I think this year of all years, uh, it's so unknown. We're going to let Chris and Clark figure out who can see. That's right. They can yeah, there they <laughs> can function as visionaries for us. Uh, but the Big East tournament, I think, will be one of the most competitive ever. We know one thing. Saturday night, uh, the 8th of March at about 11 o'clock, we'll know who's going from the Big East. One team for sure that's going from the Big East. Yanulis on the inbound. And there's that speed line up able to pressure. And they got the 2 2 1. Uh, something Jimmy Calhoun's known for. What a look. Cipolla all alone, Yanulis. That might ice it. You forget about Cipolla's ability to find people. That baseline pass a while ago. That look there. UConn might be in need of three pointers now. Jones had a chance for one and gave it up and fed Freeman for the easy deuce underneath. I like the quick deuce idea too in the timeout. Don't start flying those threes. You got plenty of time. It's the one time you like college kids to think NBA. Plenty of time. Get the deuce, stretch the game out. You can always settle for that three late. Still a minute and two remaining in OT. It's hard to resist. Your wife called. She said, bring home a quart of milk. What? In this weather? Welcome to the MMX technology department at Intel. Can I do it now? Where highly trained professionals are engaged in the extremely precise process of adding fun to the Pentium processor. Intel MMX technology. It will make your multimedia dance. Yeah. 
Minutes away from the delirium of Fog Allen Fieldhouse, the Jayhawks and their ancient rivals, Missouri. Ray Fluff, friends, has been destroying people since Scott Power got injured. That's just minutes away. Other than Tim Duncan, has anybody in the country been playing better than that kid? Syracuse by four. And Cipolla with the fine, but you think of the small guys, they don't have the cover man in the back. Moscow out, Claver not on the floor, so the rotation not what those particular five were used to. And a great look by Cipolla. You know, if Syracuse wins this, and there's an over and back on Morgan. He didn't straddle, he established himself totally on the one side of the floor. Long ways to go, but if Syracuse wins this game, I don't think you'll maybe look at the 23 points Cipolla's had tonight. You look at the two key passes. He had that long one on the baseline yep. by Yanulis for a three, and then the last one for the deuce by Yanulis. But still now, UConn has life after the turnover. Ricky Moore. A three! A Stepping three. up, Ricky. Ricky. One point game. Long ways from over now. And a foul on Rochamel Jones will send Cipolla to the free throw line. Now that's not what he wanted to do, but it does stop the clock. Make him pay for it on the free throw line. I'll tell you, Moore has been outstanding with his penetration in particular. This is one of those looks as the coach falls in love with a point uh -huh. guy who can penetrate and make the knockdown. I said earlier, I don't think Ricky Moore shoots enough. He's got a good-looking shot. He tries to get his teammates involved, and he is one of the premier point men in the Big East. But uh, that time, he just nails the three, his first three-pointer of the night. Now, you just made the Moore family happy and the Connecticut team unhappy <laughs> with that statement. <laughs> they got it going. He's coordinating them well the last couple of weeks. Jason Cipolla. 23 on the night. And getting ready to go to the free throw line. A kinder, gentler Jim Beheim, huh? Mm hmm Of course, Final Fours will do that for you. A couple of them. One in 87, one last year. And we've got more blood on the court, either from a previous encounter or something new. On low out there. Now, they have high-priced help here. The athletic director. They do. The head trainer, I mean, you name it. See, the head trainer, you know you have money in a program and your head trainer has Gucci's. Yep. <laughs> Kansas and Missouri are waiting on us. We thought we were going to be to that game with about 20 minutes to spare, but overtime has taken that dream away. You think it must be a new still, or maybe some from when he was hurt earlier. Jason Cipolla will step up. As I said, a couple of key assists tonight have been important. He is 0 for 1 from the free throw line, and he's the best free throw shooter Syracuse has. Oh, he nails that. You know he was thinking about West Virginia, Brad. 0.2 seconds left in that game against West Virginia. He missed a free throw that could have ended it in regulation. And Jason Hart, the point guard, said, you know, it wasn't his fault. It was the balls. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's good. That's the way you got to think. <laughs> and he got them both here. Two big ones. He picked out the ball here tonight. Three points, Syracuse lead, and we are down. The 40 seconds left. Hamilton running the baseline. It'd be tough to get him the ball if Syracuse covers well. Ricky Moore takes another big shot. This one's short. Hamilton trying to save it. Did he get a timeout called? Yes, they did. With a timeout for UConn, and they'll still have the ball. Let's quickly check in with Chris Fowler. Chris? Brad, just underway in Lawrence. Kansas got the ball off the tip. Rafe LaFrance wasting no time. Hits a turnaround jumper. A two-zip lead over Missouri. We'll get there right after the closing seconds. That's a gun by two guys. As we come back to action here, Teddy Valentine talking with Jim Beheim and a rare smile on Coach Beheim's face. Maybe a smile of... I don't know if that's true or not. Be a little bit of a cynical smile. Well, he has one of those looks. <laughs> Connecticut be able to step up beautifully. At that time, one of the few times, a little pulling him to string as Ricky got into the lane. He's put this team on his shoulder. So many guys can handle the basketball for Syracuse. That's why they're such a tough and shoot it. Right. I mean, if you're Otis Hill, you should be whining and dining your perimeter people. Otis is whining and dining in the second half pretty well. He has 15 points. Bergen has 11. Yanulis has 12. Zapola has 25. That's the balance of Syracuse scoring tonight. 
Back at that huddle is one of the class gentlemen, Lewis Orr, who spends a lot of time as well discussing the merits of inside play, although he was more of a stroker. Raph, the discussion that's going on right now, from what we understand, is that UConn may have called a timeout that they did not have. If that's the case, it'll be Syracuse ball and a couple of free throws coming up. So we're going to have to, quite frankly, let the smoke clear here as they come out on the court to see if, indeed, that is the case. Teddy Valentine's walking in Syracuse direction. Well, I saw Sapola smiling and Otis Hill slapping five. That's the case. That's Sapola will go up to shoot the technicals. And they had zero 20s left. Boy, that's too bad. It's the second time you and I have seen that this year. Good. Same conference, too. Mm -hmm. Going over, Timmy Thomas did it. Sapolo with 26. 27. That's one of those plays, if you know, you don't have the timeout, you like to throw it off the guy. Here's Hamilton trying to get the rebound and call the time as he flies out of bounds. And that was what it was all about. So Jim, Jim Calhoun knew right away, too. Excuse me, Brad. So the free throws go for Sapolo. The possession to Syracuse. Freeman with a foul on the inbound. And everything going right now in overtime for Syracuse as they lead by five with 26.7 seconds left. Uh, Jason made up huh, for that free throw. Yep. And he could smile because he said, my teammates pulled me through that one. He and Otis Hill are having a little discussion down on the other end and uh, starting to celebrate or thinking about it. A uh, long way to go here. UConn's going to push, get themselves a quick hitter, and it doesn't have to be a three. Not Bergen, and he missed them both. Just one would have been huge. Ricky Moore weaving his way into some traffic. Jones lost the ball. Sapola stripped it. Should be a walk. And a walk on Hill will keep it in UConn's hands. How many lives do the Huskies have? Well, Hill caught it and then went down to the floor. Well, they're going to have to get a three sometime, so they're going to have to think about it pretty soon. Hamilton, they haven't been able to free him up. Let's see if he can get around a pick. They're at that stage of the game now. the leg of Hardnett, and that might do it. They played very well that trip there. Yanoulis was solid in the corner, caused the turnover. Yanoulis cut chin and all, makes the play. And now it's going to take a steal. They're going to foul somebody. No, they won't. Hart's going to take it all the way himself. Missed the layup. Why? I mean, you don't even need it. Ten seconds left. UConn needs a couple possessions more. Bergen the rebound. And the overtime is going to belong to Syracuse, as is the game. 71-66, the Orangemen win it in OT to go to 16-10 and 7-8 and in the conference. For Bill Raftery on the ESPN crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Syracuse. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now it's Ron Franklin and Larry Conley down in Kansas. Gentlemen. Well, thanks, guys. Our situation, 4-2, Kansas on top early. And you see, we have played just about three minutes in the early going. Jason Sutherland, who did not start tonight's ball game, hits a three. First points for him tonight. And Mizzou goes back on top. Watch the get that low post position again. Unlucky on the shot. That's Grimm. Gets the outlet pass quickly to Divi Ray. Kansas doing a nice job again. Pressure on the ball. Double teaming where they find the open position to do it in. A nice move by Lee. Oh, great job as he takes it along the baseline. And Tyrone Lee with his first two. The junior out of Springfield, Illinois. And it's a 7-4 Missouri lead. That ball was tipped by Ray. John Flockerty was unsighted. Frank Rossoni comes over. Here are the guys on the floor tonight, Sutherland, Ray, Tate, Thames, and Grimm. Vaughn and Hass, along with Williams, Pierce, and LaFrance. Missouri had a straight man-to-man -man defense. Kansas has played the same thing for the opening three and a half minutes. Inside, Pierce. Well, one of the things that makes him so tough is that first very quick step that he has. Lee not able to keep up with him. Once he got that initial step, Lee was trailing the play all the way to the hoop. 
seven six Missouri still by one they defeated this number one Jayhawk team just 13 days ago Thames early kisses it off the glass and scores and he's got four and Larry as we had surmised as this game got underway tonight the first early minutes of this game are going to be very important to keep the crowd out as LaFrim scores and he'll have a chance for a three point play. Well, I'm going to tell you what, if this Kansas crowd were wearing fins right now, they'd be sharks because they want blood in here after that only loss. Watch again down inside. Jared has with that three-point attempt on the outside. Look at the reposition by LaFrance inside. He goes right back up, lays it in. This young man has stepped up so big with Pollard's absence in that lineup. He's been averaging 22 points and 10 rebounds since Pollard went to the bench. This is how quiet it gets. 16,000 plus, you can hear a pin drop. He misses it, the tip back goes to Vaughn. Pass for three. He's short, and Ray will come away with a pair. You can tell how many Missouri fans are in the house, right, Larry? I, I tell you what, that's almost as disconcerting as it, as it being loud. I mean, as quiet as it was. <laughs> Sutherland holds up on the baseline. Unlucky on the shot, knocked out of bounds by Missouri. So let's take a timeout. 15:32 until halftime. Tigers hanging tough. They lead by one. This is for Reverend O'Brien, who always told me to give it my best shot. For my grandmother who showed me what real courage is and for myself who found it. Pepsi Pep it can happen anywhere, anytime. Fight back! Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen. But it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. But today, thank you, Pepsi Club. Pepsi, Generation Next. Available in six-pack. you by. <laughs> 15 32 left to play in this opening half Missouri 9 8 in Missouri and Kansas in the 90s boy the rivalry Larry you can take all the superlatives away this shows how tough they have been against each other well when you get to that top spot in the 90s obviously Missouri against Kansas a lot of success I mean won three of those four games but I will tell you also in the 90s Kansas has had success against Missouri who also has been pretty good in the 90s well, Scott Pollard still out with that broken bone in his foot. He shot it before tonight's ball game. He, as you can see, he's not suited. He will suit on Saturday in a final home game against K-State. He will play some. That's all they'll say. They won't say how much. Ron, I watched him shoot around just before the other teams got out here for their serious warm-ups, and uh, he really favored that foot. Jock Vaughn. It's a two. And the lead goes back to KU at 10-9. Grimm, who had an outstanding game against KU up in Columbia with 20 points, loses it out of bounds. Second turnover against the Tigers. Say something else about Ray LaFrance, who was guarding Derek Grimm on that particular play. Not only has his offensive numbers increased, but his defensive work has also gone up another notch. Ray LaFrance giving Roy Williams a complete basketball game. What a great player he has been since Pollard went to the Pines. Pierce gets the screen out high from B.J. Williams. Shoots the three and switches it. And right now, the Jayhawks are hitting on all cylinders. 12-9. Missouri not in any kind of hurry right now. They don't want to get into a running game with Kansas, particularly in North Lawrence. Sutherland along the baseline, knocks it down. But I'll tell you, Thames and B.J. Williams are having quite a battle inside. 
D.J. working it against Derek Grimm this time, and Sutherland with the foul. Don Rutledge, the referee tonight, makes the call on Sutherland. Has goes rolling underneath the brace on the basket. You can see right here what happens. I tell you what, that might have been more of an acting job. I'm not sure Sutherland did a whole lot to knock him down underneath that brace. Williams to Pierce against Lee. Nice, nice move. move, and he gets the shot to go. Well, is that a pretty fake? He went right down the lane. Well, he's got six, and Larry, that's two more than he had the entire game last time. He fouled out, and he only played 17 minutes. One of the main reasons Missouri was able to capitalize and win that ball game in that double overtime thriller in Columbia. Lee almost lost the handle. Works against Pierce. You see the quick double team, and Grimm inside, misses the first, gets his own follow. Misses that one, and it's Thames this time, and he will score. What a great job of offensive rebounding by Missouri. Well, Thames and Grimm were all over that ball. Page, and Cass went down very hard. step on the inside was heading for the paint and a shot has got it with a hand let's watch has see what happens why he goes down Sullivan gave him a little bump from the back side has is going to the bench right now he just committed his second foul well if they say pictures are worth how many thousand words that told a lot right there is Decker coming into the ball game at Tate scores the freshman out of Webster Groves, Missouri. Let's grab and work around that perimeter trying to find somebody inside. They switch by Missouri and they switch back. T.J. Pugh strong to the hoop and they're going to call an offensive foul as Thames was there to accept the charge. First foul on T.J. Pugh, but already on Kansas, that is five team fouls. Look at number 23 or 33 Thames right there. Go off, leave his man, come over and help, and draw the charge. That's an excellent play right there. You see the move down inside. Pugh tried to get there, and Thames came across the lane. That's good defensive help. walked on the court to tell his players what play he wanted. John Clogarty signaled him to get off the court, and the crowd wanted the technical. Look how low Bond gets on defense. Ray gets almost as low over the ball. Sutherland, fake the three. Vaughn was right there on him. This is Faye. Pulls up that is blocked by B.J. Williams, and inside Lee on the follow. Lee was complaining that perhaps he had a hold of his shirt when he went up. 17-14, Missouri. Very physical uh, interlude going on right now. Now John Clockard, he's got a call underneath. So let's take a timeout. 11-46, remaining first half, Missouri by three. you buy. <laughs> Delta introduces Brilliance, the extraordinary new polished brass finish that never tarnishes, even when exposed to salt water. New Brilliance.
Guaranteed to shine for life. From Delta, the faucet. Now at Pep Boys, get any four of our 35,000-mile all-season steel-belted tires at an incredible low $99. That's right, any size, any four 35,000-mile tires, just $99 at Pep Boys now. 17-14, Larry, we talked about how important it was for Missouri to stay close early in this ballgame. Well, take a look at the last meeting on February 4th between these two clubs. 96-94 and a double overtime. Look at the free throw shot. Missouri was 30 of 34. Kansas 23 of 31. Third win by Missouri over number one Kansas, a team in the 90s. We showed you that earlier. These two clubs have started this game off in a very physical manner. But we kind of expected that, particularly the way they two, these two have played over a number of decades. Well, and rebounding, Missouri 10, KU 6 in the early going. 7 of 14 for Missouri from the field, 7 of 15 for KU. As Pew puts up the shot and scores, and that ends a 6-0 run by Missouri. Pretty nice move. He got it against Tate Decker down on the baseline, just turned and kind of laid it up. You know, Pew seems to get better with every game. No question about it. Sophomore out of Omaha, Nebraska. As Lee takes a long three, and he switches it. Tyrone Lee showing you what he can do outside. He really had to battle to get one earlier. This time it was easier from outside. And that ball is going to come back to the Missouri Tigers as Bradford could not get the handle on it. Watch Tyrone Lee go right down the middle. It goes up. Nice little jump shot. Oh, that was a nice follow through. A little flip of the wrist, bottom of the net. Lee looking very good early in this game. Danny Alouche comes into the ball game. He's a sophomore. Israel. Ron, you and I were talking uh, while we were away about how warm it is in here this evening. Kind of a, an unseasonal temperature around here for this time of year. We may see a lot of players out there, both coaches wanting to use a number of quality athletes. I agree with you. And in fact, the, the team that does the best job of their numbers tonight could come away with the win just because of that. Ray again, way outside, and a foul, and that's going to be Thames over the back. First one on him. You know, that's one of those fouls you just shouldn't commit. I mean, Kelly Thames has been around long enough. He should know better than this. Good block out right there. Now, look at Thames. See, he just reached up, committed. Look at it. He's trying to wave it off. He said, I didn't mean to do it. 20 to 16. Missouri up by four. As we're about to go under 10 minutes to play in this first half from Lawrence. The French left all alone. Missed the 17-footer. Thames skies for the rebound. Whenever LaFrance takes that shot like that, there's nobody underneath the rebound. Somebody's going to have to pick up that board work underneath. Offensive foul. Decker. Tate put a head down and just headed for the hoop. And he will get the foul. And that's team foul number five against the Tigers. We're now even. And that's the second one on Decker. Watch the charge again. Baseline move. Good, strong move defensively right there. Get in and take it. Put your chest out there. Take one for the club. Team fouls, even at five. Q looking for Vaughn as the cutter. He was covered up. Thames has backed off completely from Q, allowing him to take that shot, trying to help the inside against LaFrance. Pierce, not there. And the Tigers are going to push it up, and Tyrone Lee guilty of walking. Once again, Norm Stewart's going to go to his bench. He's got Tate, Grimm, and Sutherland all coming in now. Mass substitutions. Robertson working against Sutherland. Oh, what a job Ryan Robertson did oh. in the absence of Jock Vaughn. LaFrance, the turnaround jumper, it's not there. He was hot early. Now he has had a cold hand his last three shot attempts. Missouri at this point has played a very smart basketball game. They've not put themselves into a running position against a good Kansas club that likes to go up and down the floor. Lang 
nice touch by Sutherland. Pierce hit it first, then off of Jason. It is out of bounds, and it'll go back to KU. I thought Sutherland was a little casual about accepting that pass on the sideline that time instead of reaching up and grabbing it. The French with a little pick and roll out here for Vaughn. Sets it out high. Three-pointer by Vaughn. Got it. He's got five. This guy brings so much to the table. He's really had difficulty, though. Just now, the last two or three games, has really got his rhythm back and starting to play like the John Brown we saw play the first three years. Tate to Thames. Has it knocked away by Pierce? Pierce with two good defensive plays. One against Sutherland, that time against Thames. And this crowd is in this game big time now. And a foul called on the friends as he ran through Sutherland's screen. Watch the screen by LaFrance. See Vaughn take advantage of it, backs out. Watch the guy goes behind the screen, then he's going to pop out. Now watch Pierce get this steal. Hmm, I'm not sure he didn't get a lot of arm that time, but Pierce gets the steal and an easy layup. Paul Pierce doing a nice job. It's two good defensive plays. Then at the other end, LaFrance ran through the Sutherland screen and picked up his first foul. Well, the Kansas bench is up and hollering at the officials as Williams blocked the shot, and a foul is going to be called on Jason Sutherland of Missouri. That's two on him. Watch Sutherland make the move across the lane right here. Trying to keep up his B.J. Williams and got it right there. Good block. Look again. Now watch Sutherland make this move. Really has no shot at all. Nice block. Good defensive work all the way. Call a foul on Sutherland. So it's his second and he goes to the bench. Hard to find much there. I didn't see any foul. Robertson, the ass who's back in the lineup inside to the France, not there. The Missouri running, and right now they got numbers, but they'll pull it up. A loose now for three. Paul Pierce. And he's on fire. That last game we mentioned in Columbia, he was not there. He only had four points in 17 minutes. But Pierce has really come to play tonight. But Ron, he's doing a couple of things. It's not only his scoring, but it's his defense. It's his rebounding. It's his ball handling. Whenever you recruit a quality athlete, a player that can do a lot of different things, that's what he'll step up and do for you. Pierce just does what Roy Williams asked him to do. Thames has just picked up his second foul. And that is 17 fouls already against Missouri. KU has got six. Very quickly, number four, Tate Decker, will come into the lineup, and Thames will head to the bench. Pass still has not scored tonight. You have to wonder just how much pain he is playing in with a broken bone in his wrist. 70% free throw shooter, one of the better ones on the Kansas club. Knocks it down. There's a break in the action. KU 22, Missouri 20 at the 7.56 mark. Now's the time for great midwinter savings at your Metro Kansas City Buick dealer. Choose LeSabre and lease at only $2.99 a month. Choose the all-new Park Avenue and lease for only $4.19. Save $2,000 cash or finance from under 1% on remaining 1996 Regals while they last. Save $7.50 on the 1997 Skylark by Buick. Great values, great Buick savings. Today at your Metro Kansas City Buick dealer. Fairmont Zarda Dairy is now Fairmont Roberts. New name, new look, same great hometown quality check takes. Part of sports. Some of them can be pretty interesting characters. 
Look at ours. Dan, how we doing? Hi, Mr. Burley. How Good are you? Good to see you. Good Hi. to see you. Take care of Gigi for a little sure, while. Sure. I'll take a look around the place, all right? What are you doing up here? I'm the uh, producer for the 6.30 show. What, what do you produce? Uh, I... All right. Good, good, good. No facial hair. Uh, Sorry? It distracts from the top. I want to see you in a year and a half. That's it. Why? Yeah. I think you may be using the wrong shampoo. I want to talk to you about that a little bit later. Right, right over here. Right over here. This isn't one of ours. This is not one of ours. You can see Kansas leading Missouri 22 to 20 with 7.56 left to play in the first half. Right now, Roy Williams has got his troops gathered around him. They've come back after Missouri took a big lead up by five, and now Kansas, through some good defensive work by Paul Pierce and some good defensive work inside by the other players. You can see right now Missouri shooting at 44 percent, Kansas at 45, rebounding in favor of Missouri by five. Pierce has had an outstanding start with those eight points. Decker with a good move down inside. Missouri lost it out of bounds. Turnovers have hurt the Tigers in this first half. Kansas trying to capitalize right now up by two. Kansas does such a great job of moving the ball around the perimeter and eventually looking to the inside if they can find someone. The Prince is out top. Robertson, who does a great job at the point when, when Jacques Vaughn is not in there. Loose with a nice move, getting around the screen by LaFrance, and Pierce is right back on the board again. Look at LaFrance. Great LaFrance is all over the backboard. He and Pierce are doing a great job getting up on the backboard and getting rebounds for this Kansas club. Jay Hawks are up by four. Friends with the rebound. Hi, Larry. I'm back. Sorry. Just want to. It's nice to have you here. Yeah, that play by play stuff is kind of tough. Paul Pierce scores. Ten points for him. This crowd is up and cheering at the 624 mark. 26 to 20. Kansas on top of Missouri now. Watch again. Look at all the players gathered around that ball inside. But look who comes up with it. Rafe LaFrance. Good kick out pass to break up the sideline. Pierce right in front of the basket. It is a 10-0 run by Kansas. That combination of LaFrance and Pierce has been death for the Tigers in this first half. You know, one of the things we talked about early on, Larry, that you have to go back to Kansas averages 15 offensive rebounds a game over the season. They have out-rebounded Missouri offensively by 125. That's an unbelievable number when you start looking at offensive boards. Well, I mean, this Kansas club has always been famous. At least Roy Williams' club since he got here for going to that backboard on the offensive end. Are they susceptible, susceptible to the break? Sometimes they are. But I love that offensive rebound. Ray almost lost it. He was chasing that thing for dear life. And he had Jock Vaughn breathing down his back. Corner. That's big for them. Knocks it down. As we mentioned, he was one of the big guys early. He had 20 points in that first game against Kansas. That's his first three of the night right there. He and Thames were the killers. They had 46 between the two of them. So French reverses, knocks it down. Now he's got double figures at 10. That Grimm wants to take the French. and he steps out of bounds, it'll go back to Missouri. But the crowd is standing and applauding his defensive effort. Watch this defensive job here by Rafe LaFrance. Graham wants to come back and put one in. LaFrance not only blocks it, he almost catches the ball, goes off of his knee and out of bounds. I'll tell you what, it's a great defensive play to make a block. It's a great defensive play if you can catch it. Decker. 
show. They got him to change the clock. It's a 35 second, a fresh 35 seconds for Missouri. Decker standing on the baseline. Turnover number nine, Missouri. Well, more Big Monday presented by Bud Light coming up immediately following this with Fresno stay at UNLV as the Shark returns home. That's around midnight Eastern time. Be a little exciting tonight there in the old Vegas, huh? I don't think there's any question about that with the Tark coming back in town. Williams with the tip, couldn't get it to go. Thames is open if they want him. Thames got it. Well, I tell you what, that was a risky shot. It was a one on four, and he decided to go ahead and pop it up there with no rebounding underneath. Eight points now for Thames. As we mentioned, he had 26 in that first meeting, and that's going to be an offensive foul on B.J. Williams. First on B.J., and the seventh team foul on Kansas. Chuck Vaughn with a nice pass to the inside. Williams wants to go in there, and good defensive work once again by Missouri. Kelly Thames right there, and he says, yeah, I did it. I drew the charge. Missouri gets it back. They keep hanging around. You know, Kansas was an overwhelming favorite in this game tonight. Right now, Missouri playing them toe-to-toe. You can see Bradford playing very tight on defense. But Tyrone Lee said, nope, it's still our basketball. One of the things that Roy Williams' club do, they do very well is play defense on the wings. They really anticipate that pass coming from the point and either getting to the elbow or getting to the wing extended. Make it very tough on you on that initial pass. You see the trap on Sutherland. As Thomas came over, tip knocked away, stolen by Vaughn. Three on three. Thomas for three. Still 28-25. About to go under four minutes in his opening hand. And it has been fast and furious. Nice pass. Sutherland for three. Swishes it. He is one of the best three-point shooters in Missouri history and an outstanding free-throw shooter as well. Well, what made that play was the move by Decker inside to draw that defense. They had to go back in and help, and it left Sutherland open. Sutherland now with eight points. Good anticipation stolen by Decker. Well, Decker with two good plays in a row, one on the offensive end and that steal that time. One of those things that goes unnoticed sometimes, but you can't be lazy with your pass to inside post people. Shot missed. Decker gets the rebound, and he traveled. State Farm presents Rules of the Game. Today we're talking about what the call should be when a player with the ball jumps in the air, a defensive player touches the ball, and the player with the ball returns to the floor. What is the call? You worry? You're overprotective? You're a parent. Isn't it nice to know that there's something almost effortless you can do to protect your family even more? Just ask your State Farm agent for a free family insurance checkup. It's a smart way for you to decide if your family's insurance coverage is up to date. So they'll be better protected. And maybe you'll worry a little less. State Farm is there. If a player with the ball jumps and is forced back to the floor with the ball because a defensive player touches the ball, a held ball is called. Alternating possession. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. For the first time ever, Isuzu is offering up to $1,500 cash back on rodeos. So it's easier than ever to get away from it all. But uh, make sure you let your loved ones know where you're headed first. It's because I still live with my mother, isn't it? 
We are tied again, this time at 28 at the 322 mark. Coming up Wednesday on the Deuce, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, number four, Wake Forest, at number 12, North Carolina. 9 o'clock Wednesday on the Deuce. Ron Franklin, Larry Conley coming to you from Lawrence, Kansas. You know, Ron, that's going to be a good game between Wake Forest and North Carolina. The Tar Heels have really picked it up, and Wake Forest uh, struggling a little bit recently. 44% and 43%. And Norm Stewart's Missouri Tigers not only keep hanging around, but they are making it rough on the number one Jayhawks so far. Once again, LaFrance out with a high post pick for Vaughn. Thomas with a bouncer for B.J. Williams. Back to Thomas, gets by Sutherland, and that shot's off the mark. Way too strong. Tyrone Lee comes down with the rebound for the Tigers. And Hass is about to come back into the lineup. Oh, well, he is so quick to that ball. Makes the steal. LaFrance from Thomas. Give him a dozen. How about the defensive work by Jock Vaughn right at midcourt? He gets the steal, LaFrance gets the pass. Fake by Lee. Lee strong to the hoop. Maybe the best athlete they've got on this club. He made a nice fake at the top and went straight inside down the lane. He's got nine points. Right through Thomas's legs. Nice spot of reverse. Boom. Couldn't get it to go, but a foul called. Ron, we've talked about defense for Kansas. Look at Jock Vaughn, who's the leader of this defense. On the floor, kicking it up. Thomas with a pass across, and LaFrance with a finish. That's Kansas basketball. Good ball movement, good defense, good finish. Right that foul is on Tate Decker. It's his third. He wanted to make an impression coming off the bench. Well, you know, Norm got up a minute ago when he, uh, he turned the ball over, but he was hustling so on defense, and Norm came halfway down the floor applauding, saying, that's all right, you're making things happen. Don't, uh, don't stop now. Pierce with his 11th point. Pierce with 11, LaFrance with 12, Vaughn with 5, and Q with 2, Hass with 1. That's the scoring for the Jayhawks tonight. And again, Vaughn is there, and the tie ball, and it goes to the Jayhawks. How tough is Jock Vaughn on defense? I'm going to tell you what, right now, Ray is just... He's got all kinds of things going on in his head. What am I going to do? He just hesitated just enough. Watch this. It See, it went off of his knee. Yep. Vaughn comes up with it in the tie-up, and it'll go back to Kansas on the alternate possession. Two trips in a row now. Vaughn's be able to get it away, get it away from Ray. <laughs> Robertson back to Vaughn. Pierce gets the screen out high. 17-footer on the way. Floats it. That's Pierce who skies for the rebound. Can't get it. Coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett halftime report with Chris Fowler and Clark Kellogg. Huge NBA trade, Big East overtime at Conference USA. Highlights there and more. The Delta Fawcett halftime report. Three-pointer on the way. Won't go. Robertson tips the ball away, and the foul is going to be on B.J. Williams of Kansas. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of grabbing and shoving and pushing and hacking going underneath that basket right then. You could have almost closed your eyes, blown your whistle, and pointed at anybody. Watch underneath. You can see LaFrance right there. Oh, there it is right there. It's a takedown. He had him right by the neck. Derek Grimm went, went down. D.J. Williams had, him, had a hold of him. Graham, an 82% free throw shooter. Robertson picks it up. Well, we're 
disappointment a lot of folks. Who do we have here? Is it going to be Tyrone Lee? I think it looks like Lee. Yeah. Tyrone Lee picks up the foul. His first. Tyrone Lee. 19 fouls against the Missouri Tigers. And Tate Decker goes to the bench with those three fouls with only a minute, four seconds until halftime. Delta Fawcett halftime report coming up. Chris Fowler and Clark Kellogg standing by back at the studio for that. T.J. swishes it. Sri Sandy is out of Omaha, Nebraska. A sophomore. T.J. Pugh, he was Mr. Basketball in the state of Nebraska. I know the Huskers wanted him badly. He had to go through a period. He broke four bones at different times since he has been here in Kansas. And a wrist and a hand. But he's okay, healthy, and contributing mightily with Pollard on the bench. And he's just picked up the foul. Good idea, Roy Williams threw that press out there right after Missouri tried to uh, get up the floor quickly after the free throw. Two fouls on T.J. Pugh. Well, oftentimes I've watched Missouri play so much over the years, and whenever I see them play in a very physically tough game, they seem to hang around close. They can make it tough on you if, in fact, the game is, is allowed to go the way it's going right now, and it is. It, it's not an up-and-down type game, which Missouri, uh, I think, would be at a disadvantage in, in this game. Well, they're hanging tough tonight. They won it 13 days ago, and right now they're trailing by only three as we have just gone under one minute to play. I think this club is really an extension of the personality of their coach. He's pretty tough himself. Yep. you got to be when you hold a job for 30 years, Larry. <laughs> Robertson for three. That's Grimm with the rebound, and here come the Tigers pushing it up, and they'll set the offense. 37, now 36 seconds. What have we got? About seven seconds difference between shot clock and game clock. Surprised the Bond is backing off a of Ray right now with the success he's had against him defensively. I think he'd be out there trying to get another one. Shot clock is 15, now at 14. Boy, he got a little French move to the left and got it. His first two, it's a two-pointer. Kansas wants a timeout. 20-second timeout, five ticks showing on the clock until halftime. 33-32. Oh, and Derek Graham made a real nice move. Now watch LaFrance on defense. As you see Graham, now watch him catch the ball. See LaFrance is coming out to get him. Now he's already made the step to the right of the time. LaFrance gets his feet underneath of him. A good, intelligent offensive move that time by Derek Graham. Graham, 20 points in that first ball game, as you can see, five tonight. He has six rebounds. John Clockerty, Frank Bassoni, and uh, Don Rutledge talking over their positioning and strategy here in this last five seconds. You know, referees have as much strategy as players and teams. They do. Robertson working against Sutherland. look at it one more time Jason Sutherland trying to guard him Robertson got it away and you you could see there was no time left we're at halftime 36 32 KU on top let's go to the studio Chris Wow Ron thank you you never know what to expect when it's a border war this is a Missouri team that has not won a game when another team is campus devastated at Iowa State but hanging tough Hanging tough in part because they're doing a great job on the boards. They out rebounded Kansas in the win back at Missouri, and they're hanging tough, and they've not allowed Kansas to spurt out. And that's one of the big keys to Kansas' success, their spurtability. They better get to the free throw line a lot, though, in the second half if they're going to win, as they did the first time in that double overtime game. Coming up in our Delta Fawcett halftime report, scores and highlights. And, yep, more tournament talk that's coming up. <laughs> Thank you.
ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Isuzu, equipment for real life, and by Philips Magnavox, bringing the power of the internet to your own television. Send email, get sports scores, find dinosaurs. Is something missing? Exactly. The computer. Web TV from Philips Magnavox. The internet now on your television at an affordable price. Here she comes, right on schedule. Please insert tape two. Honey, could you turn that down, please? The 190 horsepower escape vehicle, Isuzu Rodeo. So, where do you want this? Hey now, <laughs> I ordered a new copier. This is better than new, my friend. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah. Oh, what do we have here? Enlarges too. Yeah. Whoa. Even so late. <laughs> I'll take it. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. That was close. I didn't think I could shove this baby through. What's more amazing than the places you can go on the Internet? The fact that you don't need a computer to get there. Web TV from Philips Magnavox. The Internet now on your television at an affordable price. Welcome back to our Delta Fawcett's Halftime Report. Hope you saw our first game. Hope you were here right for the beginning of Big Monday. UConn and Syracuse in the Big East. A classic game mm -hmm. and a game which was critically important for the chances of both teams coming in. Exactly. As you look ahead to the Big East tournament, obviously for the NCAA tournament, but nonetheless, UConn able to, Syracuse actually able to prevail in overtime. For that highlights in a second, but first of all, I guess the big sports news of the night, the NBA oh. deal. Nine players involved, and once again... There's uh, Don Nelson wasting no time. He sends these guys to New Jersey. And he actually said he's not finished yet before the February 20 deadline. But here's five bodies that go from Dallas to New Jersey. In turn, Dallas will get four bodies, a nine-player deal. And with all these trades, you have to let some time evolve. But you also have to understand, too, that there's salary cap ramifications, contract situations that make these maybe a little more detailed and complex than what you see on the screen. Can't wait to see what's up next if he's not done dealing. <laughs> not of the Huskies and the Orange, but this game, obviously, very, very important. Both these teams are not going to get in the NCAA tournament. Uh, one of them may need to win the Big East tournament anyway. Richard Hamilton hits the three with 44 seconds to go, but here's the biggest shot of the game for Syracuse. Sapola misses the three, but look, chases the ball down in the lane, hits the leaner, ties it at 57. UConn does not get a good shot as they hold for one at the end of regulation. We head to overtime. Otis Hill now will break the tie in the paint, gets the hoop, gets the foul. Syracuse simply more poised in overtime, and they get their 16th win up the record to 7-8 and eight in the conference. Sapola, 27 points and three assists. How do, you, how do you see the Big East shaking now? We talked about the five teams mm -hmm. beyond Villanova, Boston College and Providence, the five teams we think are battling for two spots. Obviously, Connecticut is hurt by this. Exactly. Syracuse, on the other hand, trying to move to that 500 number before you get to the Big East Conference Tournament, Georgetown, Miami. West Virginia has to really step on it. You mentioned that early on. They've got to get a couple more wins, and without a doubt, UConn, this was a win that they desperately needed to get some momentum heading forward. Now they really have to go, and you think about winning on the road against Villanova coming up this weekend. Miami has beaten Georgetown twice, if it comes down to a comparison of those two teams, by the way. Now to Conference USA, another interesting conference. Marquette, a team that looked pretty solid a few weeks ago, but has been plummeting. Four straight losses, and need a big win tonight on the road. Right, UAB, a team you figure for your tournament team, you've got to be able to get a win down there. There's Carlos Williams for the Blazers. Uh, Golden Eagles up by 10 early, though. Then Marquette, Basil Abraham, the pass, and flushes it down. Around the screen, it's uh, Hutchins hits the shot from the top of the key. And right now, Hutchins and company, a 15-point lead. Marquette trying for the 15th win and trying to go to 6-4. and four. In the conference, UAB, I guess, if they would get uh, hot at the end of the season, would have a chance. Louisville and South Florida, David Adler to James Harper, strong for the dunk. Cuts the Louisville lead down to three just before halftime. Then Alex Sanders to Dewan Wheat. 
and they don't stop the ball very well. He Not flops. at all. Louisville up by eight at that point, and then Wheat, alley-oop to Nate Johnson, the freshman, goes up and gets it. And Louisville got a battle here from South Florida, a team with a power rating of 221, but the Cardinals win it by 11 at home, 20 wins. Benny Crum's team should be pretty solid. George Washington, at this point, battling for an NIT bid if they can stay above 500, blowing out the Dukes on their home floor. And another loss for Colgate is the Bonnies up at 213 and 9. They would hope that they might be in line for an NIT bid as well. The highest scoring team in the country comes up one short of the century mark with Charles Jones, the guy's number two overall in individual scoring, has 33 points. More coming up on the Delta Fawcett half number four. Kansas up on Missouri, but the lead is only four at halftime. Stick around. This halftime report is presented by the Delta Faucet Company. Delta, the faucet. Polished brass has always had one problem. Until now. Delta introduces Brilliance, the extraordinary new polished brass finish that's guaranteed to shine for life. New Brilliance from Delta, the faucet. Hey, Valerie, it's me. Give me a call when you get in, okay? Bye. Val, hey, where are you? Uh, are you mad at me? Listen, whatever it is, it's my fault, okay? It's not you, it's me. For the first time ever, Isuzu is offering up to $1,500 cash back on rodeos. So it's easier than ever to get away from it all. But, uh, make sure you let your loved ones know where you're headed first. It's because I still live with my mother, isn't it? Okay, guys, to work on your dunking skills, we brought in the experts. Now, there's a great deal on McDonald's Chicken McNuggets. I want to do some crisp passing. Grab six while they're just 99 cents. And then take it to the hall. Nine are only 159. You call that a donk? Easy, Grant. Right now, 20 McNuggets are just 299, perfect with America's favorite fries. Watch my slam. Yes! That's a dunk. <laughs> McDonald's Chicken McNuggets, America's favorite way to dunk. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? <laughs> get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. When's the last time you saw one of these? It's funny that people don't think twice about regular visits to their dentist or family doctor, but don't see an eye doctor until there's a problem. The fact is, an annual eye exam from a Pearl-affiliated doctor of optometry is important whether or not you wear glasses or contacts. It can help detect a serious vision problem early when it's most treatable. And I promise it won't hurt a bit. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Halftime in Lawrence would have been a one-point game if not for a late three-pointer. Here's Paul Pierce, the steel and laying top-ranked team, a 5-4. A Kansas most people's selection is at least the front runner heading into the NCAA tournament, which is uh, still a few weeks away, I know. Right. But you're ready to, oh, yeah. if not step out on a limb, at least make a, a fairly bold prediction based on injuries. Well, exactly. I think Kentucky's still the team to beat. Really? I say it in, for a number of reasons. One, they're defending champs, even though their personnel has changed. They lose Derek Anderson. But Rick Pitino has had a chance to regroup that team, galvanize them. And there's an awful lot of pride that goes into defending the championship. The other thing is, they really, more than any team in college basketball, I think, exert and force their will on how they want to play on other teams more so than anybody else. Kansas, clearly a team that it would give them problems. Wake Forest, despite suspect guard play of late, still a team to keep an eye on. Minnesota, I really like. But Kentucky, right now, in my mind, is the team to beat. I think they're the championship team, obviously, from last year. And every, somebody's going to have to beat them and dethrone them. If they can do that without the injured Derek Anderson, then Patino will be even more deified <laughs> than he already is. Hey, our third game tonight is UNLV in Fresno State. Yes, it is the return of Jerry Tarkanian, Thomas, and Mack. There'll be 18,000 people there. A kind of mixed reaction for Tark's homecoming. But... Perhaps just as importantly, this is a very important game in the Pacific Division of the WAC. And look at UNLV. This is a bubble team. Oh, yeah. This is a team that has a better power rating than some of the Big East teams we talked about. It's a team that's beaten Tulane. Mm -hmm. It's beaten USC. 
It's beaten Miami, another bubble team out of the Big East. So this is an important game for their chances. Don't count them out. No, you certainly can't count them out. You might see five teams from the West. One of these teams might be that fifth team. And this might be, like the first game tonight, an elimination game for an at-large bid. NBA update coming up. Land Rover Discovery can take you just about anywhere in the world. So do pay attention. Time to look inside Toyota's Smile album again. The Toyota Smiles are as deep as the snow here. What makes you smile more, cross-country skiing or your forerunner? My forerunner, because without my forerunner, I couldn't come up skiing all the time. It has plenty of room to put all my equipment in. You'll be smiling, too, with all the great forerunner savings you can get now at your Toyota dealer. How about a quick lesson? Sure. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> come on, smile. See your Kansas City Metro Toyota dealer. We're back on the Delta Foster Report. The NBA update that Dallas Mavericks, what's left of them, was yeah, they have the ex-Jayhawk, Greg Dryling, starting at center, but after all, they are playing in Vancouver. They do lead by 11. Check out the rest of the NBA and the NHL story tonight. prepare their own taxes and almost 8 million make mistakes mistakes that can cost them money but agent R block stands behind every return it prepares and with those odds maybe it's a mistake not to go to agent R block a new car payment be a financial burden call 1-800-32-SMART about smart lease by gmac it just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around don't let a new truck payment stretch you to the limit call 1-800-32-SMART about smart lease by gmac it keeps new vehicles well within reach Columbia's goal is to survey hospitals for the best methods of care. Correct. Then share them nationwide? That's right. That way patients get the benefit of all of our shared medical experience. Goodness gracious. So if I go into surgery, essentially I've got over 200,000 people working on me. In theory. In theory, I've got 200,000 doctors and nurses working on me. If it makes you feel better. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> the kind of defense in the first half that helped propel the number one Jayhawks to a 36 to 32 lead. But Larry, I look at the stats at halftime and I say, hey, Missouri out rebounded them in Columbia. They are out rebounded them right now. One of the reasons they're staying in the game. Well, it's been a very physical game, but it's also been an exciting game, particularly the end of the first half with what they were able to put together for Missouri. Take a look at Ryan Robertson now. 
He comes forward, catches the basketball. LaFrentz gives it to him. Important to go meet the pass. Look at Jason Sutherland trying to catch up. Robertson just stops and releases. Bottom of the net gives Kansas a four-point lead at halftime. Look at this again. You know what? I bet they practiced that play. Well, there are the numbers. 21 rebounds to 17. The shooting percentages. Missouri by 3%, 46-43. Turnovers 13 against the Tigers, seven against the Jayhawks in the first half. This is Graham out high against LaFrentz. Started Sutherland to start this second half. Played pretty well in that first half. Has with a good defensive play. And they get the ball that went to the floor. Come back with it and score. Aaron Lee with a nice pickup down on the floor. He's almost lost at that time. Pierce almost dropped it in front of Roy Williams. 